All right, here we are with a cleaning video. This is my Iwata handpiece. And of course, I have the airbrush shopping guide that you guys are going to have access to. What I use to clean it is this Medea cleaner. Um, that's a squeezy bottle. Love that bottle. Hold on, let me turn this around. This airbrush cleaner. Now, this airbrush cleaner is specifically for acrylic airbrush paint. If you are using a gel polish and an acetone, you will clean that with acetone. You should not be using that, but it's up to you. If you are using an air gel, you're going to want to use an air gel cleanser. What we do first is we spray. And I like to pretty much just push some air to it, like through it first, just to see, put a little cleanser in there, just to see if it sprays out any color. If it sprays out color, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to have have a problem now this is spraying clear but i guarantee you there's probably a little color in the barrel so i'm going to use my q-tip and just swish it around there push it down real good to clean it out there wasn't a lot of paint on there so let's take it a loose we'll add a little bit more cleaner this is actually a voiceover i did it correctly first and then it didn't record so i'm voicing over for you but i'm blowing air through there and you see those bubbles see how they're kind of pink yeah, that's remnants of the color that was in there. What happens when you blow bubbles, the air travels back up the needle through the handpiece, and then you can see like, oh, okay, yeah, there's some color. That was a, a quick change gasket, and these are linked in the shopping guide as well. This is how I change in between like hand pieces using two or three different colors if I'm doing it that way. Sometimes I'll use more than one hand piece, depending on like how fast I'm trying to really go. But you don't need that. You do not need that. Let me explain to you. What you need is, that's a dental tool. And you've probably seen those at CVS. You can get them in bulk on Amazon. This is a airbrush cleaning needle. It actually comes with the cleaning pot. And those little, like, um, that's the wrench. Those little pipe cleaner things. This and that needle and that cleaning pot came together. And I have two sets, one set for air gel and one set for acrylic airbrush paint, just because, you know, I like to keep them separate. Hmm, they get bent up. So when I take it apart, I always lay it out like how I take it apart, right? Because that's the easiest way to take it apart and remember how to put it back together, the cleaning pot. I do have a separate cleaning pot for air gel and one other one for acrylic airbrush paint, just because it just makes life easier. I don't want to mix chemicals like that. So you never know. That is the front baby nozzle piece. And then there's a little mini nozzle that holds or houses your needle. I unscrew that and then pull that out. Lay it next to its companion piece. Then I'm going to twist this little gasket at the end and push the needle through. And there is paint on there. That's why it took a while to come out because there's paint in the body of that hand piece. You always slide the needle through and not push it back that way when you're threading it back through your unit you don't end up uh, bending it and you can see in the cup it's just a little bit of paint right there see it's coming out and you can see it's pink so then what i'm gonna end up doing is oh i'm just explaining that the paint travels along the needle right so then it gets caught in the belly and so now you see me putting cleanser at the back now let me be very clear this is a deep cleanse right technically you don't need this all the time i do this at the end of the week but i also airbrush a lot use your little pipe cleaner pieces to wiggle it around in there and what i'm doing is i'm threading it back through the body so it's actually going into that body barrel piece and then i'm going to turn it and see if any paint come out not really and i probably replace these little pipe cleaner things like every three or four months depending on how ratty they get i'm gonna wipe in here with a q-tip again these little chunks came out of the handpiece let me zoom in these little see those little pieces some of that's hair from the pipe cleaner but the other pieces are actually little chunks that came out of the handpiece because that paint was caught in the the barrel And that's why I run it through that way. You can also like dismantle your handpiece. And if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can put it in there and have it vibrate that stuff out of there. That's totally fine. 
I wipe into the cup with a little paper towel. Why? Just because I want to make sure that everything is out. And I don't see anything on my paper towel, so that means I'm good to go. And then I want to dry everything off. See how it looks in there? It's pretty clean. So I'm going to use my little needle piece. And I am just going to clean in that mini nozzle. And just circle it around. If it's like cracked up paint in there, it will um, come out. Then I'm going to use the dental piece just to make sure there's no paint hanging out on the end of here or even around there. Why? Because you do not want paint in there. Just chilling, drying in there, making so the thing is unusable. And then if you look right here, where I'm pointing, there's a little paint on there. That's where the paint was caught back into the hand piece. So we're going to just wipe that off. And be careful when you're wiping this off. You don't want to bend it. Because that will also make it spray crazy. And a lot of times people are like, well, my paint's getting, it's all splattery. Sometimes you didn't bend the tip of your needle and then it just has a little curve. So you can kind of bend it back, but sometimes you can't. That came through clean and you see I threaded it from front to back. And I thread it from front to back because when you're pushing it through there, there's a trigger piece. So if I would have put it the back way, it would have bent the needle tip slightly at the front. Don't want that. We want to make sure we try to keep it as straight as possible. Twist this on and then grab your little wrench and turn it the rest of the way. Don't go superhero 2000 and twist it all super hard, but don't leave it too loose. And then you're going to push your needle forward. Make sure you're not pulling back on the trigger when you push it forward. And then you're going to tighten that back gasket. And so when you pull back on the trigger... You see the needle go all the way in. But on that one, it did not go all the way in, right? Because I had the trigger pulled back. Now look, all the way in, out, in, out. So make sure you tighten it. And let's finish the assembly. Put this piece on very carefully. And then the back end piece. And then I'm going to hook it back up to the air. And no color is spraying, right? It's totally empty, totally dry technically. So let's spray a little color and see what we got. Yeah, nothing but clean cleanser. That cleanser is actually like a, a soap and a water mix. I'm not sure of the soap. I don't think it's dishwashing liquid. It doesn't smell like it. But don't put anything in your airbrush that's not designed for your airbrush. For the simple fact is it can leave residues in there. And then make it difficult for you to actually use the airbrush in the future. Okay? So, our best case scenario is to not be chemist and just use what comes with our airbrush. That's it. Thank you for watching this video. Enjoy the other ones.